guest today is Ryan Cooney, Managing Director on the Secondary Investment Team at Hamilton Lane. Uh, Ryan, thanks so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Uh, great to see you. And look, for 30 years, Hamilton Lane has invested in private markets, with 22 of those years investing in P secondaries. And yet, when I think about private client investors, they're new, relatively new to this world of P secondaries. So break it down for us. What is a private equity secondary transaction? Who is involved in it? And and how is it progressing? Yeah, uh, so in its simplest form, a, a secondary investment is essentially buying a limited partner interest from the original investor in that fund. That original investor uh, made a commitment to a private equity fund on a blind pool basis, and they become the LP on day one. Mm -hmm. uh, the From a secondary basis, uh, the secondary buyer will come in and work with that uh, original LP and buy that interest and essentially replace that LP who is selling. Uh, a great example that I could give you is, let's say for example, you're a college endowment or a foundation. And um, over the last 20 years, you've built a robust private equity portfolio. And today, you know, for whatever reason, you need some liquidity. Uh, well, you would go to the secondary market and you would work with a group like us, who's a secondary buyer, um, in selling some of those private equity positions because this market is different than the public world. If you own a stock and you want to go sell it, you could do so. Private equity, there's no redemption mechanism, right. natural uh, redemption mechanism or liquidity mechanism in it. Um, so you have to work with a group like us and you can sell it on the secondary market. And, and you mentioned, Ryan, sell it for whatever reason. What are some of the reasons that an LP might sell a stake? Well, a host of reasons today. Um, there are a lot of motivations that are driving uh, LPs to the market today. Uh, I would say back in the early days of secondaries, 100% of the sellers were mostly distressed. That's just not the case today. Hmm. There's a huge mindset shift with LPs in the market today. Um, they are focused on their portfolios, whether that be a new strategic plan where they need to sell some of their non-core relationships or they may want to rebalance or portfolio management type of tactics. Maybe in today's market, uh, which is really happening uh, often, mm -hmm. uh, LPs are selling because they need a little bit more flexibility in their portfolio because they don't have enough of liquidity to do what they want to do. Right, so as the allocation to private markets evolved and private equity evolved and became a greater piece of the allocation, naturally the portfolio management needs arise from that and need for liquidity. So speaking of kind of the size of the market and the deal uh, volumes, uh, Hamilton Lane recently published an article on P secondaries where some of the numbers that you cited that the deal volume in secondaries skyrocketed from 20 billion in 2008 to over 800 billion in 2021. So why is it that the market is seeing such great growth momentum? And you know, part of that question is, what did you guys see in the early days, you know, 22 years ago, that made you think this is going to be a great growth opportunity? Yeah, the first part of that question behind the growth of the market, um, there's really three factors. Number one is the the overall growth within the private markets. Um, the private markets are growing annually, 15 to 20 percent. Today, they're sitting on north of $7 trillion of value. We as secondary buyers view that as our inventory. Every one of those dollars is a secondary opportunity. Right. And uh, historically, as an industry, we've purchased one to 2% of that. So a lot more growth. There's a lot more options. This is the second growth driver. There's a lot more options in the market today for buyers. Back in 2009, there was one type of secondary transaction. Today, there are multiple types of transactions, both on the LP side and the GP side. The third uh, growth factor is just the mindset shift. What we talked about a little bit earlier, the LPs are thinking about this differently. The GPs are thinking about this differently as well. Uh, they are using it to their benefit on the GP side. While the LPs may be thinking about portfolio management, the GPs are thinking about how do I build relationships in this space? Um, how do I offer my investors liquidity? And so they've created transactions mm -hmm. that they can bring to their LP base offer them distributions, um, hold on to good assets a little bit longer. And at the end of the day, it's a mutually beneficial transaction. So this has led to a lot of growth in the market, but it's also catapulted secondaries into more of a mainstream type of category. For us and what we saw early on, mm -hmm. I, I think you have to think about who we are as Hamilton Lane and where we fit in the ecosystem. Sure. On this, you have the fund managers and household names that everybody knows, yeah. other managers that you may not know. On this side, you have the, the investors. Those investors are trying to figure out how to access this market. 
Hamilton Lane sits squarely right in the middle of all of that. And our clients are the our customers are the clients that are trying to really access those managers. And so what that affords us is this front uh, row seat of the private markets. Mm -hmm. We're seeing everything that's happening. And what we saw back then was this growing market, but there was a challenge. And the challenge was if you wanted liquidity, it was really tough to get. And on top of that, we were going through the dot-com era. Right. We were going through the global financial crisis. There's a lot of challenges within private market portfolios. That's where the private, that's where the secondary market emerged to answer a lot of those concerns and questions. And that's really how the secondary market got built off of those challenges and off of those downturn cycles. Well, of course, that's what they always say, right? And right is out of the challenges that come out opportunities and innovation. And speaking of the front row seat, let's uh, just zoom in a little bit on what you're seeing so far this year. Um, th there is a Pitchfork article that predicted that private equity secondaries are set to boom in 2023. And that same article actually uh, quoted your colleague, Tom Kerr, the global head of secondaries at Hamilton Lane, who said the following, the tailwinds in terms of deal flow and volume and activity for secondaries have never Ever been stronger. So Ryan, what are you seeing in terms of deal flow? Um, and I guess my question is, are you seeing more GPs, more LPs become more motivated sellers this year versus last? Yeah. So, so far we've talked a lot about transaction volume. Uh, we were talking about those stats earlier and what has led to a lot of that transaction volume. Uh, the better indicator about the momentum behind this market is the deal flow. You said it. Um, and um, Tom is right. This is a particularly attractive market environment. And, and we're seeing that in our deal flow. We saw a record amount of deal flow last year, $240 billion of opportunities that our secondary team screened. What got done in the market was, according to Jeffries, $108 billion. Mm -hmm. That's what just got done and cleared. Gap. Huge gap. It's the biggest gap that we've seen between mm -hmm. what we're seeing and what's actually getting done. So. This is a common misperception about this market. It's grossly undercapitalized. Uh, there, and on top of that, it, the, the supply demand picture gets better. Um, not only is it undercapitalized, but you have a lack of relevant uh, competitors in this space. Uh, really interesting stat was 50% of all that market volume is coming from four of the largest secondary players in this market. If one of those four secondary players either slows down deployment or steps back off of the market, that dramatically swings this supply demand dynamic even further in favor of the buyer. So this is an overarching theme of the market today and really why we're excited. Right. So there's this huge gap, as you mentioned, between the deal flow and what's actually again done in the market. And is that just a function of not enough funds being available to allocate to P secondaries or is it a function of pricing? And maybe the LPs are not willing to take the discounts uh, and you know, P secondary funds are looking for a better entry point. So I'm, I guess I'm curious, which one of these drivers do you expect to play out to close the gap between supply and demand? Yeah, pricing is obviously a big component of this market. Um, going from 2021 to 2022, average pricing fell about 10 points. But we have to take a step back in time and maybe go to July time period of last year and really see what was happening in the market. And the supply story was LPs being over allocated to this asset class. Um, one thing that we tell all of our clients is even through different, more difficult market cycles, you have to maintain a, com a consistent commitment pacing to this asset class. That's a really tough thing to do when you're over allocated to private equity. Um, and so what LPs needed to do was reduce exposure and they came to the secondary market to alleviate that. Uh, and if you were a seller and you came to market in July, you were met with buyers that were very cautious mm -hmm. uh, of what was happening in the market. And so some kind of took a step back when that happened, pricing fell even further from the mid 90s to the lower 80s. We were ready in Q4 for this opportunity and, um, and we were met by uh, a number of LPs that were willing to transact at that 20 to 25 discount range. Right. But the headline, do you think we've seen the worst of the discounting already or do you think we'll see something like 30, 40 percent discounts that we saw during the financial crisis? Tough to say. It's, it's really driven by some of the macro um, perception in the market today. Um, we've seen it stabilize, I would say, over the last quarter or so. Okay. Um, but if 
the environment continues to deteriorate and there's still mo moments of volatility, yes, um, we could see that. The biggest thing is that LPs need capital and they don't have enough of it today in their portfolios. And so they're feeling pressure. And as long as that, uh, that pressure persists, we're, we're going to see some good discounts. That's going to be an opportunity for potentially further discounting. So Ryan, just kind of take a step back and looking at the bigger picture. Today, the assets under management for P secondary funds is somewhere around $400 billion. Um, so I assume this is going to grow pretty rapidly as the private markets, private equity markets uh, grow. But I'm curious, how would you position PE secondaries as a part of private clients' portfolios today? Is it uh, a need to have? Is it a nice to have? Why should somebody have PE secondaries in their portfolio? Yeah, well, there's a lot of reasons um, that you should have secondaries in your portfolio, and that's coming from, from the, the secondary person. Um, <laughs> we overall think it's, it's an important part of clients' portfolios, but we also think it's a really important part of the asset class. It is vital for private markets to continue to grow. I'll give you a really interesting stat uh, that we came across, um, and this was out of uh, Jeffrey's more recent report. 50% of all the sellers last year were first-time sellers in the secondary market. And there's not a lot of good data around this next stat, but we would estimate there's 200 limited partners that sold last year. There are thousands and thousands of limited partners all over the world. So what if that number went to 500 or 1,000? So we think that there's a tremendous growth opportunity in this market, but it doesn't matter if you're a buyer or a seller. We think this is an important part of the market. Well, it's a very important part of the market because, as you mentioned, if you're going to allocate your private equity, you want to be able to have some liquidity valve, and this provides such a significant potential exit for those LPs looking to exit. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much for sharing your insights today, for joining me on the desk today. Really tremendous perspective on the state of the PE secondaries market. We really appreciate it. Mm -hmm.